in a lot of games you're going to want to have a level up mechanic and for that you need to put in a couple of things in place and we're going to go over all of those things today so we're here in the third person character template it's a clean project like you can make yourself if you want a finished project with all the code included there's a link down below in the description to my patreon where you can download that if that's something you're interested in so first things first we can just walk around and we have our character set up so we don't need to make the actual character we're only going to be talking about gaining experience and calculating levels and the way we're going to be doing that is we're going to be making a blueprint class and we will make a class of type actor component and this will call something like uh, bpc for blueprint component and call it something like player stats because this is going to hold all of the statistics for our player opening that up this works just as any other blueprint but instead of it being an actor it's a component so this we can place on our character in a moment on this we're going to first make a couple of variables something like experience which can be a float or an integer generally my rule of thumb is if you're going to be doing calculations with it you'll make it a float and if you only need something that counts up simply keeping track of how many of a thing there are that's really the only time i actually use an integer so we can also make something like the hp and maybe the uh mp something like defense all that kind of stuff we're not going to program all that in right now so let's just go hp and mp and uh let's also do uh something like strength and then our general level those are all the variables we're going to be using here with that all made we're going to open up our character blueprint whatever your character might look like and now we can add that stats component to our character here. and you'll see that it has fields for the experience the hp the mp the strength and the total level of your character now what we need is we need to have our character start with a base amount of hp and mp and strength and then for every level it gains we want to add some hp some mp some strength maybe only one of them maybe a little bit of all three of them we want to be able to influence that on a per level basis so there's going to be a lot of data entry that you're going to need to manually do in order to get this done so before we program anything in let's actually start all that data entry and the way we can do that is starting off in here if we go to blueprints we can make a structure and we'll call this str for structure and we'll call this something like level ups and this structure is going to hold all of the level up information so for level one we're going to have a certain amount of hp mp strength and so on and so forth and it requires a certain amount of experience to get to that level so that's going to be the variables we need here so let's start off with experience required which we can make a float or an int again it doesn't really matter that much and then add a couple more variables here and we'll add some hp some mp and a little bit of strength on these level ups so now we have a structure that we can use to make a data table with so we can right click again go to miscellaneous and create a data table here and it gives us the option of a bunch of different structures including the one we've just made structure level ups and we'll call this uh, dt for data table and we'll also just simply call this uh, level ups and now in that data table if we add a row we can see let's make that row a little bit bigger here we have a row which has a name uh, in this case i think our row name is just going to be the same as the row number because it's representing the levels and then the experience required for that will be zero and the hp we get from that uh, we can set that down here let's say that we by default have 50 hp and 50 mp and 10 strength something like that then we simply make a new row we name this row number two and the experience required here will be something like 10 experience and when we reach that we gain uh, one hp and one strength no mp though and we add another row and we make that row three and that will be gain that uh, 50 experience we'll become level three and there we gain one hp and one mp and you can keep doing this on and on and on as much and as often as you would like 
So let's do that. Let's go to player stats here and make a custom event or you can make a function. It really doesn't matter all that much. And uh, call this something like game experience. We'll make a custom event for set HP level. We'll also set MP level and we'll then set our strength level. For the experience, we're going to set that. So we drag that out of here, holding Alt to get a setting node. And we will set that to be equal to our current experience. So we'll also get our current value. We want to add to that a number and set that as our new experience value. So this empty spot here in the addition node, we're going to drag that into our custom event to make a parameter and call that XP to add. That will update our experience. And from that, we can now use that data table we've just made to calculate what level we should be. So we'll try to get the data table row here from the data table that we've made. And the row name will be one, two, three, four, and so on and so forth. The amazing thing is, if we just drag in our current level, which is in this case, level zero, and the level itself actually uh, can be and probably should be an integer, we can create a string out of that. And if we just pull that into our row name here, our level will correspond to one of the rows in our data table, meaning that we now have the information that we need. So we can split the structure pin and check if our output experience required is less than the actual experience that we have. Because if we have more experience than is required for the next level, we of course want to level up. So we only do that when the row is found. Important note here, uh, you don't want to use less than. What you want to do is less than or equal to. Because if you get the exact amount of experience, you also want to level up. And now we're checking against the level that we currently are. So of course, that's always going to uh, be true. What we want to do is add one. So we want to check, hey, the level we are right now, plus one, do we have enough experience to gain that level? If so, we want to uh, get our level here and do a plus plus to increment it. And that will then become a level plus one. And from there, we can start setting our HP, MP, and strength. You can all do this in one custom event if you want to. I like splitting up my code as much as I can. So all of these are going to be pretty much the same. So I'm just going to uh, do one of them. And we want to start by adding in a for loop, where the first index is 1, and the last index is our current level, meaning that it's going to loop through from index 1, to whatever our current level is. So if that is 10, it's going to do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. And we're going to do the exact same thing that we did here. And we're going to use that to get ourselves a data table row corresponding to that level. At the very start of our custom event, we're going to first set our HP to being zero. That's quite important. And depending on how your HP system in your game works, this might kill your character <laughs> uh, when you level up. So do be mindful of that. If you're not using Unreal's built-in damaging system and you're only killing characters when damage is applied, but you're doing something else weird, like every tick you're checking if your player HP is zero, this could mess you up. It probably won't, but it could. And there we simply place in our index from the for loop into the build string uh, for integer. That will then get the corresponding data table name. Again, it is important in your data table to actually name the rows 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and so on and so forth. I wish you could get them just through the row number. That's sadly not how data tables work. And there's good reasons for that as well. Anyway, so when we uh, get to that, we're doing the HP. So we will set the HP to our current HP plus whatever is in the HP column of that specific row. This, the funny thing there being, is that that also means that if you want to do something weird, right? Like adding in a row number four here, and we want to say, actually, when we get to this level, 
We want to temporarily like get a lot of strength, but at the cost of some of our HP. And then when we get to the level after that, we will just invert that to being uh, getting some HP back, a little bit more HP back, and then taking away some of that strength again. Now you are going up in certain stats during certain levels and down in other stats, and you can create very fun, really balanced things. And that is pretty much all there is to it. For the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to make the other two stats into their own separate custom event. What you really want to do is all do that within this one custom event to prevent you iterating through the entire data table a number of times, because that is rather computing intensive. So what you want to do is just use the data table row output from this event and setting the HP and strength in the same way that we just did for the HP. And now we can just copy this over uh, with a couple of minor changes. So we copy this entire thing over to set MP level and set strength level. And you just connect all of them up the same way you did for HP. Meaning we first set the value to zero. And then we loop through the amount of levels that we have. Slowly adding more and more value to our stats. This is not necessarily the most computing efficient way to do this because you are iterating through the data table a lot of times to add everything up every time you gain experience or you gain a level, rather. Instead of just looking up one row with all your new stats, you could also do that if you wanted to. So what you could instead do is like make this, uh, instead of gaining one, you could just like set this to 51 and then set it to 52 here and so on and so forth. Uh, that's the wrong field. Uh, set this to 52 here and so on and so forth. That way you only ever have to look up one of these rows and that is a lot more performance. And if that is the way you wanna do it and that feels better for you to do it, that is the better way to do it from a computing perspective. But from a being able to design and balance your game perspective, I personally usually prefer this method because it lets you very easily change these levels on an individual basis without then affecting everything that's under it because if you're doing this like this is 50 this is 51 this is 52 if you then want to change what level two gains you you need to change everything in your entire data table that's under it as well which is going to take forever if you have a game that goes like up to a level 100 something like that if you want to change something early on that in that data table you're going to like take up half an hour changing one stats in your data table that's not very efficient on your time either so that's the reason that I like doing it like this. Anyway, now that we've made these three custom events, when we level up, we just simply want to run uh, the set HP level, MP level, and strength level. And now it will set those to whatever it needs to be whenever we level up and only whenever we level up. And let's also make a quick actor here to give us some experience when we run into it. So let's call this something like XP orb blueprint xp orb just because naming things properly is nice add a static mesh just make that static mesh a material sphere scale it down to like 0 0.2 something like that in all axes please add a sphere collision as well make that a fair bit smaller too in the event graph in actor begin overlap we're going to cast to bp third person character to check whether or not the thing overlapping it is our third person character and if so we can gain experience on our stat components and the experience to add we can make into a variable here so let's make a variable something like xp value make that a float let's set that by default to something like five. Oh, and then of course drag that in and connect it up to that node and that's everything we need to do in order to make an experience orb it's really really easy and just for shits and giggles, let's also, when we level up, uh, spawn a Niagara system at location. We'll get the owner of this component, and then we'll get the actor's location, which will be where our player is. And real quick, I'm just going to make a Niagara system here, a omnidirectional burst. We'll make them a random color between purple and red. And now when we level up, we get a little bit of a firework going on. It's very simple, but just a little visualization. And just to prove that we actually do increase our stats, I'll also add some print strings here that will just print out the new stats 
for us. So we'll uh, print out our HP, our MP, and our strength. Don't forget to set our system templates here. And that should do. So let's place in a few experience orbs here. Also check 50 experience is way too much here. So let's set that to 20. I also made a mistake here. Let's set this to 30. This is linear leveling. Uh, usually your experience requirements will go up exponentially, but hey, what do I know? One last important thing is in your player character itself, uh, when you start your game up, you also want to run the uh, gain experience. You can just add zero experience to it, but what that will do is it will check you against uh, the first row, which requires zero experience. So it will level you up to that level from having no level to being level one and then set your stats to whatever the first row here is. So now that we have all of that set up, and we have a few of these experience orbs laying around we can play and we'll see we had 0 50 and 50 if we pick up two experience orbs we have 0 50 and 51 and it's not destroying the experience orbs because i didn't code that in because i'm an idiot but you can see we are leveling up just as you would expect and at some point you have reached the maximum level and you can still gain experience but of course you're not going to level up anymore so uh, in the experience orb you also probably want to destroy the actor once it's been picked up because otherwise <laughs> you can do exactly what we just did so now it also destroys the experience orbs when we pick them up and it feels a little bit more like how you expect a game to behave so thanks for watching this again if you want the project files of for this entire setup it's relatively simple but maybe you want to look through it or maybe you just straight up want to steal what i've made here which is entirely fine there's a link down below in my description to the Patreon where you can get this project file and play around with it on your own speed. And a very big thank you to all of my Patreons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help out supporting the channel, there's a link down below in the description to the Patreon page. And a special thank you to Eleanor for supporting at the Cave Digger tier on Patreon.